We already learned the principle of linear impulse and momentum. Linear impulse is defined as the sum of the total forces acting on this particle, integrated during this process from initial time to final time. And therefore, if there is no net impulse, then this term can be eliminated. Then the principle of linear impulse and momentum has now become the conservation of linear momentum, which simply states that. The initial linear momentum of the particle equals to the final linear momentum, and the conservation of linear momentum can also be applied to a system of particles. In this case, the total linear momentum of all the particles in the system at the initial state equals to the total final linear momentum of the all the particles in the system, and this applies to when. There is no net external impulse to this system because any internal impulse will be cancelled out. But sometimes this condition can be relaxed, and we can still apply the conservation of linear momentum for a system of particles if the external impulse can be considered negligible. So when can we consider the external impulse to be negligible and therefore apply the conservation of linear momentum? Well. For that, let's look at an example of a hammer pounding on a nail. Let's first look at the nail and draw its free body diagram. It is subjected to its own weight force, and the hammer exerts a large pounding force acting on this nail. And from experience, we know that this pounding force is able to significantly change the momentum of this nail. Therefore, it is known as an impulsive force since it contributes significant impulse. But when compared to the pounding force during this short period of time when pounding happens, the weight force of the nail will not contribute significant impulse. It will not help to greatly change the momentum of this nail. Therefore, the weight force is known as a non-impulsive force. If we draw the free body diagram of this hammer, again it is subjected to its own weight force, which is again a non-impulsive force that will not contribute to the change of this、uh, momentum of this hammer. But at the same time, according to Newton's law of action and reaction, the hammer is also subjected to the large pounding force. So, if we look at the nail and the hammer individually, then each of them is subjected to a large impulsive force. Therefore, for each of them, the momentum is not conserved, and it is difficult for us to apply the principle of. Linear impulse and momentum, either since we do not know what the pounding force F is. However, if we look at the nail and the hammer as one system and analyze the force of the system, then we notice that the two pounding forces are internal, and since they are action and reaction, they can be cancelled out. Therefore, the system is only subjected to the two weight forces, which are indeed external forces, but they are non-impulsive. Therefore, there is no external impulsive forces acting on this system. And since pounding takes place during a very short period of time, therefore, we can consider the impulse caused to this system is negligible, and therefore, the total momentum of the system. Is conserved. Let's look at this example. The two cars were initially driving towards each other with the speeds shown, and if they collide into each other and then stick together and then start to move together, we need to determine the common speed after the collision, and also we need to determine the average impulsive force between them during the collision, if the collision lasts 0.5 seconds. So for this problem, we first treat the two cars as one system. The reason again is because the unknown large impulsive force they exert on each other during the collision is now internal. Therefore, they do not need to be considered. Therefore, if we draw the free body diagram of the system, it is only subjected to the weight forces as well as normal forces. There is no external force along the horizontal direction to this system. Therefore, along the x direction, 
the total momentum is conserved, which means that the total linear momentum of the two cars before the collision equals to the total linear momentum after the collision. And don't forget, the two cars move together after the collision. Therefore, from this equation, we only have one unknown, which is V2. So we substitute in the known information, and we can solve for V2, which is the common speed of the two cars after the collision, to be negative 0.722 meter per second. And according to our coordinate system, the negative sign here indicates that the two cars will be moving to the left. And that's the answer to the first part of this problem. For the second part of the problem, we need to determine the average impulsive force between the two cars during the collision. And to do that, we need to expose the impulsive force as an external force, and we cannot achieve that by considering both cars as one system. Therefore, we need to do our analysis on one car, and it doesn't really matter which car you choose, since the impulsive force between them are action and reaction, and they have the same magnitude, just opposite direction. So let's draw the free body diagram of this car during the collision. Apparently, along the x direction, its linear momentum is not conserved since we do have this impulsive force acting on it during the collision. However, we can apply the principle of linear impulse of momentum along the x direction. Its initial linear momentum, mbvb1, plus this term right here, is the impulse during the collision equals to its final linear momentum, mbvb2, and we already solved for vb2 during the previous step. And since here we're looking for the average impulse force, then the impulse simply equals to the average force times the time period, which is 0.5 seconds, substitute all the known information. The only unknown in this equation is the average impulsive force, and we can solve it to be about 5.33 kilonewton.